Well, good morning, it's Charlie Z02CTM. Um, just want to do uh, one of uh, a two part video series looking at um, the IF amplifier. So, this amplifier here is going to be on the input side of the crystal filter. Um, I'm thinking about having this feeding into either a, a 3 or a 6 dB pad before going into the crystal filter. So, from a design point of view, I want to have the output um, looking at a uh, or aiming for a 50 ohms. Um, from what I can see in the literature, around 20 dB would be an ideal gain for this on the input side of that crystal filter. Um, so that's what I'm sort of ideally looking at for that. So from a design point of view, the approach I've taken, um, it's going to be a, a 2N3904, um, which is not written down there, but I'll write it in now for completeness. A 2N3904. So just a, a stock standard um, transistor. Right, so like I say, um, I'm going to pick on 10 milliamps as the quiescent current passing through this device here. Um, I chose that because in the spec sheet um, that produces or has the, the highest amount of um, DC HFE or capital HFE. And uh, so that's what I'm choosing to go through there. So I won't labour too much on the on the maths this time. It, it's all in here. I'll just um, skip over that to a certain extent and then move forward to actually doing some tests. Um, another one, this is for 9 megahertz. Again, it's now at the IF, so there's no, uh, no attempt to make this broadband. Um, it's all, like I say, based on the IF of 9 megahertz. Uh, this transformer here I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, in this particular case, I'm just trying this by file around uh, transformer 4 to 1. Um, as opposed to a more traditional uh, primary and secondary type transformer, but I'll talk about it in a sec. So from a biasing point of view, uh, again just taking the geometric mean off the spec sheet, so for 10 milliamps, uh, minimum of 100, uh, maximum of 300, gives us uh, 173, so square root one times the other. Uh, exactly the same approach as we've taken before for the um, emitter resistor, setting the emitter voltage at a tenth VCC uh, and then 10, 10 milliamps through it uh, gives us uh, 138 ohms so we'll use a, a, a standard value of 150. Uh, our bottom resistor or R2 in our voltage divider biasing uh, again just from Ohm's law first we find the voltage across it uh, the current through it gives us our resistance. So first is working out what the base current is, which is our collector current divided by beta. Uh, noting that our uh, collector current is very similar to our emitter current, so 10 milliamps divided by 173 equals 0.578 microamps. So now getting the voltage across it divided by the current through it. Noting the current through it needs to be uh, for a nice stiff voltage divider bias, 10 times the base current. So emitter, emitter voltage plus 0.7 divided by current through it comes out at uh, 3598 ohms, so we'll use a standard value of 3900. R1, again that's uh, the, the top resistor, again we'll find the voltage across it, we'll work out what the voltage drop is across the 100 ohm resistor, work out what the voltage is there, and then 10 plus an additional base current gives us 11 times the base current through that device, and that's what we see here. Uh, VCC minus 100 ohm voltage drop, minus the voltage at the base, divided by the current through it, gives us 16857, so we'll use a standard value of 18k ohms. So that gives us our 1, 2, 3 resistors, that's setting up the, the DC biasing conditions for, for that transistor. Now, the emitter degeneration, um, I'm, I'm going to play around with this circuit here as a means of uh, reducing the overall gain of um, the stage. Rather than running it flat out, um, I'll start with the running flat out and then reduce its gain through emitted degeneration to get us into that sort of uh, 20 dB gain. And if I need to go further once it's in circuit for to reduce any overloading or any other issues, then I've got the ability to adjust the gain there. So there's a, uh, a 20k trim pot there. I used 20k because I ran out of 10k's, so that's fine. It's still minimising the current um, through that device. Uh, this R here is to protect the diode. So I'm, I'm going to test two different types of diodes 
in the actual test which we'll look at in, in a sec, uh, the 4148 and the 4001. So um, worst case scenario, if this trim pot here was at the highest position, it would be providing pretty well 13.8 volts um, through this device which is forward biased to earth. Now this is a 4148, so off the spec sheet, um, a 4148 has a maximum current of 300 milliamps, so that resistor would have to be uh, no less than 13.8 divided by 300 milliamps gives us 46 ohms. So I'm just going to go way overboard there and just select a 1k ohm resistor. Uh, brown, black, red, nice and easy, grabbed out of the junk box and um, we'll be fine on that one. Uh, so that's what that is there. T1, um, that at the moment is, it just came out of the junk box. Um, I was aiming for 10 by filer turns on an FT37-43. The one that I grabbed out of the junk box was already wound using 24 gauge. Um, if I was to rewind this from scratch, then I'd be more than happy to use 26 gauge. Would have been fine, as I've said there. Um, and in that particular configuration there, it's a 4 to 1. So if I've got 50 ohms here, that's being multiplied by 4 and presenting to the collector 200 ohms in that particular configuration. Um, right, coupling capacitors, just double checking that um, we're not having any great losses across those um, at our 9 megahertz. So we know that our capacitive reactants is 1 over 2 pi Fc. Uh, where C is 100 nanofarads and F equals 9 megs gives us an XC of 0.18 ohms. Big tick, no problems there. So we'll live with that. Right, so um, I'll leave that page to later. So what we'll do now is we will um, have a look at the O-scope and uh, we'll throw in a, a, small, a small signal here. We'll measure the output um, over a 50 ohm resistor and we'll have a look how this circuit here performs um, with a couple of different diodes. Um, I'm going to have a, a two switches that we'll see in a sec. One switch effectively takes this out of circuit and puts this um, capacitor here directly to earth. In other words, this is now running flat out with no generation. And then the switch in the second position introduces the circuit uh, into play. And then there's a second switch that then um, selects either a 4148 from this point to earth or a 4001 from that place to earth. So we can look at two different um, transistors there. So let's just uh, have a look at this and then we'll zoom back out and we'll have a look at the scope. So that's what we can see here. That should still be in focus. Um, uh, that's our, that um, capacitor there that's in parallel or normally in parallel with the um, emitter resistor and this little orange wire takes up to that switch. In this particular switch, in this position, uh, it's now earthed and in the other position it introduces one of two um, diodes, which we'll see in a sec. Uh, like I say, the output is a 51 ohm resistor on the output and we're just scoping the output and we're also scoping the input. Uh, but we're just more concerned about the output. So just coming up to the uh, scope, um, I don't have a, a very good wide angle lens here, so we'll just stick with uh, looking at the scope and you'll just have to trust me when I uh, say I'm flicking various switches. So at the moment, that is in, like I say, the position that is bypassing um, that whole emitter degeneration circuit. So now the amplifier itself is running flat out. So if you were to come in, uh, where am I? Um, yeah, so that's input and output. Uh, in that particular configuration, if I just grab my my notes, uh, where are my test notes? There they go. So in that particular configuration, there um, the max gain with no degeneration is 25.5 dB. Um, LT Spice for the same circuit was suggesting around 27 dB. So um, we're in the ballpark there. Um, it's certainly been my experience that uh, when I build something, it certainly doesn't perform as well as the simulations, but suffice to say it's in the ballpark, which is fine. Right, 
So let's just now introduce um, the 4148. So I'm going to flick that into, and we'll see this actually decrease a little bit. So we are now um, introducing a little bit of um, emitted de degeneration. It's going to use the screwdriver here to adjust that trim pot. And we can see here that we can get some gain uh, variation there. So we'll go back up to uh, the max setting. And if you would look at the um, 20 log V out versus V in, so in other words, our gain calculation, um, that turns out to be 20 dB. So my max amplification for this amplifier in this configuration is 20 dB. I'm now going to flick the second switch and replace the 4148 with the 4001. Click. So that's now been introduced and we can see a slight increase. Um, so again, so that's the, that's the 4001 and we can also vary that. And so that's now at the max setting. And if we were to do the maths on that one, so 20 log V out over V in, um, it comes out at 22 dB. So I gain 2 dB uh, by having the 4001 as opposed to the 4148. So uh, that's what I'll probably stick with. Um, I don't have any other ability or test equipment to get any more elaborate in uh, introducing or trying to work out noise figures or anything else, anything else. So I guess I just have to live with, with what I got. Um, I did try for something different. Um, instead of having this arrangement here, I uh, had this small 1K ohm trim pot that I had in series with that um, capacitor there to earth. And, and while it worked, uh, I, it was quite a significant overall gain reduction. Um, I was nowhere near that sort of 20 dB, it was more like 15, so um, I elected to remove that uh, little trim pot and to reintroduce uh, this arrangement here with the diode and um, the trim pot. Um, I mentioned before um, there's no difference, or I saw no difference in having a transformer here with the 10 bifilar turns uh, versus a more traditional transformer which had a, a, a discrete primary and a secondary. Uh, for example, uh, 12 turns on the collector side versus 6 turns on the um, secondary side. Remember, so 12 divided by um, 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 50 times 4 equals 200. So, um, but I guess the crux of the matter is I saw no difference between this and a, a more traditional transformer. Um, I think that's all I wanted to touch on. So from a, a frequency response point of view, so again, I'm only really after, um, this is now in circuit with the 4001. Uh, I'm only really interested in nine megs. If we were to go down a frequency, we'll certainly see a little bit more gain, um, which is to be expected with the, with the slightly lower frequency and the greater gain with the 3904. So it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so not too bad. So where I am here at, like I say, 9 dB, uh, say again, 9 megahertz, um, I'm quite happy with that. It's um, giving me uh, that sort of ballpark figure of 20 dB, oops, apologies, um, 20 dB gain that um, the books seem to suggest was um, about what we want for that first IF amplifier. Um, right. Pause. Um, the only thing I wanted to say before I finish off with the SIGGEN question is uh, I'll do another video next after this looking at, oh, I haven't built it yet, but this is what I'm thinking for the second IF amplifier. Um, it's, it's going to be based around the MC1350. Uh, this is, again, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, Going by the spec sheet, there's got to be this output transformer there split, providing VCC to the two output transistors. Um, I'm going to run with some guidance that came out of EMRFD for this output transformer here. Um, again, straight out of the spec sheet, this arrangement here for varying the IF, um, or varying the gain I should say, um, will allow for two inputs for the gain, a manual IF gain plus AGC. 
uh, and we'll look at T1 as well. So this is what I'm thinking about will be an approach for that second IFM that will be sitting on the output side of the crystal filter. Right, so the only other thing I want to ask is a, a bit of a shout out I suppose or a bit of a, a question. This is my current RF generator that I use for, for testing um, and it's ad absolutely adequate for providing a signal into you know, a small signal into say an IF amplifier it's certainly great for driving um, RF power amplifiers and the like absolutely no problems at all and, and I quite like it and it seems to work quite well um, but what I wouldn't mind knowing is does anybody have some recommendations for a RF signal generator which would allow me to get right down into say minus 100 dBm and so those really small um, signal levels to adequately test um, the receiver front end as a whole. Um, the minimum I can get out of this, if I was to go back to amplitude, is um, 0.01. So if we move the cursor across, that's that's the lowest I can get, 0.01 volts, um, which is obviously significantly more than say minus. 80, 90, 100 dBm. So that's my question. If anybody's got a good recommendation of a device they know of, um, I don't think I'm prepared to spend ten thousand dollars. But you know, if I need to spend a um, thousand, then so be it. But um, like I say, I wouldn't mind a recommendation on that. Um, I have this, which to be to be honest with you, really brutally honest, it doesn't seem to work that well. Um, not overly cheap, but I think when I took the took the um, the cover off, I think just the isolation could be a lot better. So I can either, you know, one option is I, I build my own one, or like I say, I wouldn't mind knowing if there's a, um, a really nice SIG gem which would do it from, from scratch. This supposedly has a maximum attenuation of 90 dB. Um, and I think if I do the maths right, uh, 1 millivolt, and 100 dB gets down to the sort of levels we're after. But um, if I set this to say even, you know, I don't know 0.1 volt, for example, and start shoving in 60 or 70 dB, what, what I'm getting out is just, it seems to be rubbish. Um, admittedly, I can't measure it very well on the uh, oscilloscope because the sensitivity is not there, but I just get the impression that this is not working that well. Anyway, so I'll, I'll leave that as a question. And um, I'll say 73s uh, and um, finish off soldering up the circuit and then start to work on the, the 1350 amplifier. Okay, cheers all um, and happy soldering.